Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. As we go through the Bible, um, there's parts we go through that are kind of that are difficult to talk about, and but we're going through it uh, uh, verse by verse. So there, I don't skip over sections and go, "Oh no, we're not going to talk about that." No, we're going to talk about those those things um, here. And so this isn't necessarily if I'm choosing to preach a sermon and I'm only preaching this one sermon. Uh, in this church for the year. I'm not going to preach on this particular passage, but if we're going through the Bible, it's something that needs to be addressed. And so yesterday we talked about the flow of fluids taken from Leviticus 15. Today we're going to be talking about the flow of sexual fluids. Um, so again, this is uh, just a warning. If you like to listen or watch this episode as a family, Today and in yesterday's episodes are probably not a good time to do that. Um, I would advise just adults really need to listen to this unless you want to start talking to your kids about these issues and you might not want to be doing that right now. So listen to it and it's up to you. If you want to you know, play it for the kids, you can go right ahead. Um, but just I warned you. All right, this is taken from Leviticus chapter 15, verses 16 through 24. All right, so if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and read that. It should be a shorter episode today because it's not as long in many verses as yesterday's. It says this, Whenever a man has an emission of semen, he must bathe his entire body in water, and he will remain ceremonially unclean until the next evening. Any clothing or leather with semen on it must be washed in water, and it will be remain unclean until evening. After a man and woman have sexual intercourse, they must each bathe in water, and they will be, remain unclean until the next evening. So that's uh, the sexual act here. Um, so it was just a matter of taking a bath, okay? There was no, you didn't have to destroy, um, you know, if you touched a pot, that didn't have to be destroyed like the other fluids. Uh, which happened, um, it was just get cleaned up, uh, take a bath here. Um, that was it, and no sacrifice at all, okay? Um, God gave the gift of sex, and so that, that gift is, is, is not sin, okay? And God is portraying that here, that the sexual act within marriage is not sin, and it's a beautiful thing, and therefore, after the sex, Clean yourself up and, and uh, uh, be on your way, okay? Now, don't go right to the temple right after this happens, uh, is, is what he's saying. But uh, it's very little you have to do after this. Verse 19, whenever a woman has her menstrual period, she will be ceremonially unclean for seven days. Anyone who touches her during this time will be unclean until evening. Anything on the time, uh, on, wait, anything that the time of her period will be unclean. If you touch her bed, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. If you touch any object she has sat on, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. This includes her bed or any other object she has sat on. You will be, uh, you will be unclean until evening if you touch it. If a man has sexual intercourse with her and her blood touches him, her menstrual impurity will be transmitted to him. He will remain unclean for seven days, and any bed on which he lies will be unclean. Okay, so um, if he had sex with her uh, outside of the menstrual period, um, he was just unclean for the rest of the day. If he has sex with her during the menstrual period, he's unclean for seven days. Okay, um, and, and that's it. So you can see from this, there's... Um, there's no sacrifice that needs to be done and there's no uh it's just basically uh clean yourself up and, and use uh, common sense if you um sit where you know there was this loss of blood um it's, it needs to be cleaned up and, and you're uh, defiled during that time now you're asking have i heard this uh, situation happen in the bible well yes you have and you're going to see and it was actually in genesis chapter 31 verses 26 to 35. That's where Rachel, uh, she's fleeing uh, with her husband, uh, Jacob and Leah. Uh, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel are running away uh, from Laban. 
Okay. And as they run away, Rachel thinks, oh, this is a great idea for me to steal an idol. And so she steals uh, her father's idol. And then they, they, Laban finally catches up to her. When he catches up to her, he says, hey, you know, you stole my idol. And Jacob is all mad. He's like, why would we steal your idol? Uh, but you can search. Search away. I know we didn't steal your, your idol. And so they search every place, and they finally come to Rachel. And she is actually sitting on it inside her, uh, like, camel bags, and um, like the bags that you have on the camel. Uh, she's sitting on those, okay? And she doesn't want her father to see that. So she says, oh, you know what? I'm sitting on this bag, and I'm on my period right now, so you shouldn't uh, uh, look under here uh, at that. And uh, Laban is like, oh, yep, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, you know, stay far away from that. And so he does, and then that's how she she hid that. And so she plays out... Now, this was before these, these commands were given, but these, this stuff was followed uh, before the commands uh, given here. But that's how Rachel played out with this, that everything that she was touching was uh, unclean, and Laban stayed far away from that as a result. But what I want you to see here is this. The flow of sexual fluids was treated differently than the flow of, of other bodily fluids and we talked about yesterday the flow of those some of those bodily fluids was an infection or a sexually transmitted disease and so that was uh like sin there okay and you had to do a sacrifice to do that there's no sacrifice needed with this because this is the sexual fluids um it being exchanged between a husband and wife here and god ordained that and god that was part of god's plan and there's no it just basically clean yourself up after that happens all right so hopefully that explains everything with here with the flow of fluids uh tomorrow we're going to be moving on away from fluids all right join me tomorrow as we continue our journey through leviticus lord's blessing i'll see you then mm -hmm.